Hi, I'm Kevin. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'd like to show you how to make a strawberry jam twist bread. I made the same bread last night and can assure you that it is totally delicious. And here is the bread. It's very glamorous looking. Actually, it looks like it's braided, but trust me, it is merely twisted just like your host. Now, the bread is a little messy to make, but it is very easy to make. Now, I'm going to use my stand mixer to mix the dough, but you could definitely use just a large bowl and a spoon and then your own two hands to do all the mixing. So I'm adding three quarters of a cup of warm, that's about 110 degrees, whole milk. And then I'm going to sprinkle on two and a quarter teaspoons of dry active yeast. You could use instant yeast if that's what you have, but do not use rapid rise yeast because rapid rise is an entirely different animal. And then to the yeast, I'm adding three tablespoons of granulated sugar. I'm going to whisk this together for just a quick moment. Then I'm going to let this stand for about, oh, five to ten minutes to let the yeast proof. We'll be back. All right, ten minutes later, my yeast has foamed up appreciably, thus proving to me that it is alive. And now I'm going to add a half stick of unsalted room temperature Butter. And you want to make sure that your butter is at room temperature. It needs to be fairly soft, but definitely not melted. Okay. Use my spatula to get this out of here. And then we need two room temperature eggs. And if you're allergic to egg whites, and I recently discovered that some people are allergic to egg whites, just use the yolks. The recipe will work out just fine with yolks only. And then you need to add one and a half teaspoons of salt. Salt is necessary to give this bread flavor. And then I'm uh, going to add three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. If you only have bread flour, go ahead and use it. Recipe will work out just fine. And then let me clear the decks. We need to hook up the mixing bowl to the stand mixer and I've outfitted the mixer with the dough hook. And again you could do this uh, recipe in a large bowl and just use a stout spoon to do the mixing. And I'm going to mix this at low speed for oh four to five minutes. But we'll come back. Okay. Dough has kneaded for about four and a half minutes. So let's have a look at this creature. If I can get the dough hook off the machine. Here we go. Pull it over here so you can see. And then slide the dough off the dough hook. It's coming off very easily. Move this aside. And then let me grab my marble board here. This board is my workstation. Let me move you down. And then I'm going to transfer the dough 
to the board. And this is a rather sticky dough. And you don't want to over knead the dough because we're, we're not looking for, you know, a sandwich bread. We're looking for something that's fairly light and fluffy. And then we do have to knead the dough by hand for about a minute. And if you didn't watch my basic white bread video, be sure to watch it now because I explain in detail how to knead bread. What you do is fold the dough over on itself, and you'll notice I did not add any flour. There's no need to. You turn the dough over on itself and then push it out with the heel of your hand. Yeah, this is a very nice dough, very easy to work with. We're just getting, making sure that all of those ingredients, especially the butter, is nicely distributed within the dough. And we're good. And then I'm going to form this dough into a ball. And to do that, I just fold the sides underneath until you have a very smooth surface like this. And then you can either quickly wash out and dry and grease the original mixing bowl, or to save time if you're shooting a video, have another large bowl handy. And I grease this with just nonstick vegetable spray. And in goes the dough, smooth side down. Flip it to grease the other side. And then cover it with a sheet of plastic wrap. Let's see if I have to fight with this plastic wrap. Uh, not too big a fight. And then this goes into a warmish location until the dough doubles in volume. That will take about 90 minutes, so we'll come back. Ooh, too close. Okay, while the dough is doing its initial rise, you can prepare the strawberry jam. And you'll want to use your own homemade strawberry jam made from the strawberries that you grew in your very own garden, like this. And you will need about a cup of the jam, and you want it to be at room temperature. I actually warmed my jam yesterday, and that was a mistake because the jam was really sticky when I went to spread it on the bread. We will get to that step in just a moment. So yeah, about a cup or even three quarters of a cup. This is enough. Okay, and I'm going to let this sit out and let it achieve room temperature. We'll be back. Oh, what you can do to help the strawberry jam achieve room temperature and to achieve the right consistency is to stir it up vigorously with a spoon so that it becomes somewhat pourable. It will be easier to work with this way. Okay, see you in a minute. Our dough is almost ready, so let me show you what we need for the next step. All right, you'll need a nine inch diameter springform pan. Springform pan has this little latch that releases the bottom. And we need to grease this. And you can grease it with butter or nonstick vegetable spray or Use what I'm using, good old Crisco shortening. And be sure to grease the sides very well because this is where the 
uh, twisted bread tends to stick the most. All right, the dough has definitely doubled in volume. That took about 90 minutes. So now I'm going to deflate the dough. And onto the work surface it goes. Now this next step, you want to roll up your sleeves. And this part is a little tricky. You need to form this dough into a 12 inch wide, 16 inch long rectangle. First form it into a rough rectangle. And then grab the old rolling pin. Try to get the 12 inch side first. How are we doing? I have my two foot ruler here. Need to go a little farther. And again, no flour on this board. You don't need it. Yep, it's about 12 inches. And then we have to go 16 inches long. Still trying to maintain the rectangular shape. Move this camera a little bit so you can see better. There we go. You just have to be patient here. Let's measure this. Okay, we are at about 15 inches, so I need to go a little longer. Yeah, it helps to have a measuring device in your kitchen. If you like to make these kinds of breads and desserts. How are we doing here? Okay. Yeah, we are pretty good. And then, on goes the strawberry jam, which I did stir up, and you don't want to use too much of the jam. If you put too much on, you're going to end up with a great big sticky mess. So I'm going to use about half of my cup to start, and then I'm using an offset spatula to very thinly spread the jam. And at first you will think you do not have enough jam. But don't add more unless you absolutely have to. Okay, I'm going to add just another soup spoonful here. Yeah, I added too much jam yesterday and boy was that a mess. And I hope this is a little tidier today. Okay, we're going to give this a try. So what you do is roll starting at the 16 inch side. We're going to roll this as tightly as possible. You'll notice I left a bit of a border on the sides. Okay. See how the jam is starting to puddle here. That's what we don't want. So we may still end up with a sticky mess after all, or maybe not. This might not be too bad. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'm going to pinch the seam. 
pinch the ends too. And then flip this so it is seam side down. And then grab a either a sharp knife or even better, one of these pastry or pizza cutters. And I'm going to cut this lengthwise in half. And the pizza cutter seems to be the best tool for this job. And again, just be patient because everything will work out. There. Okay, so we have two ropes. And then we want to turn these so that the jam side, or the exposed side, is up. And then, going to make an X by crisscrossing the dough this way. And then, I'm going to twist the ropes like this. I hope you can see all right. Pinch the ends, and then going to coil this into a circle. And here's the next tricky part. We have to put this into this. And hang on, I'm just going to rinse my hands because they are very sticky. Okay. Now, to get this into the pan, I'm going to use two flat spatulas. Wish me luck. In you go! Yay! We are in the pan. This looks very attractive right now. And then, something else I'm going to do is add a little more of the jam just into these pockets over here. Let me move you in closer. Because we want this to be pretty jammy. So I'm just opening some of these areas here. Okay, and then, hold on, I have some frozen strawberries that I'm going to add. These were whole frozen strawberries that I chopped up. I'm going to tuck these in. I'll move you in closer. Tuck these in here and there. And again, they are frozen. You just want small pieces. I did not use any frozen strawberries yesterday. Although the bread was absolutely delicious, I th thought that it would look nicer with some berries visible. And you don't need too many of these. Let's see, where can you go? I'll tuck you in here. Okay. And then, move you out. I'm going to cover the pan loosely with plastic wrap and then let this rise in a warm location just until it's doubled in volume. Alright, we have doubled in volume 
So into the preheated 350 degree oven it goes for about 35 minutes. Oh, I wanted to mention that if you'd like to serve this strawberry twist for breakfast or for brunch, go ahead and form it into the twist and then put the twist in the springform pan just as I did and cover it loosely with plastic wrap. But instead of putting it in the oven, put it in the refrigerator and let it rise overnight. And then the next morning, you can bake it off. Just a thought. Okay, here it is. All puffed and browned and absolutely beautiful. I'm going to let it cool on a wire rack for about five minutes. Meanwhile, we can make the icing to put on top. For this, we need a green bowl and one cup of confectioner sugar, three tablespoons of heavy cream, or you could use half and half or milk, but I think heavy cream gives the icing a very nice white color. And then I have some of my homemade vanilla extract. Oh, it smells terrific. About a quarter teaspoon. Yeah, if you've never made your own vanilla extract, you must. And then just violently whisk this. Okay. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Okay, now we can unmold our twist. So I have a cake stand here. Let's see, it's pretty hot. And now watch, I'm going to, I have asbestos fingers. They can take the heat, but you should wear mitts. Yes. And you know what, I'm going to, run a plastic knife around the edge just for insurance that this thing will unmold well. Yes! You ready? Here we go. Aha! Let's look at this. I'm going to bring the camera down so you can see. Oh, it is beautiful. Look at that. I'm glad I added those extra, not the extra, but the um, little frozen chopped strawberries. Makes the dessert look even prettier. Okay, we can glaze this thing. Yeah, you want to glaze the bread while it is still quite warm. Here we go. Anticipation. I can't wait to try this. Yeah, I think this one is even better than the one I made yesterday. I'm going to use all of this glaze. And since the bread is quite warm or even hot, the glaze is going to soak right in and add sweet, delicious moisture. There, we look good. A close up for you. And of course, we should let this cool a little more, but I'm not going to because I'm hungry. Okay. Look at this. It's sticky and a little bit gooey. Oh, it's 
absolutely lovely. Truly awesome. So although the top has a hint of crispness, the interior is actually very soft and pillowy. I hope you will give this magical, delicious, pillowy, puffy, crispy, berry-ish dessert a try. And if you learned anything from this video, I hope you'll give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I hope you'll subscribe. And I will list the ingredients in the description box below. And in a few days, I'll put the printable recipe over on my website, kevinleejacobs.com. So thank you for spending time with me today. Uh, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And I'll see you next time with another delicious recipe. Bye for now.